And I'm joined now by someone with a vested interest in how much executives get paid, the new head of the Australian Shareholders Association, Vas Kolesnikov. Vas, welcome to the program. Thank you. Let me first ask you about continuous disclosure at Leighton's. I spoke to David Stewart in February and there was not a hint of further problems. Is this an issue? Well, the thing about continuous disclosure is that people that are disclosing are the ones that uh, n know the information. Um, so uh, when, do you, when do you release it? I find it hard to believe that uh, so much money all disappeared in such a short period of time. Should Leighton shareholders take this all lying down then? I mean, Leighton's sh big sh uh, shareholder, Hocktooth, uh, had their chief scalped. What should happen at Leighton's? Well, look, end of the day, I think the decision maker that, uh, um, that created the, the, these losses has, um, has already departed. Um, shareholders are pretty much um, left with, uh, with the remains. You at the ASA are calling now for some sort of clawback of incentive in these sorts of situations from chief executives and managers who make decisions. How would this work? Well, look, I think... At the ASA, we're concerned about the way the remuneration packages are structured. To the extent that um, executives have a, have a call option, there's no downside. And if it's all short term, um, or a lot of it short term, um, the decisions are made. It takes three years by the time the ultimate outcome um, is known. In this situation, Leighton's made the decisions. Um, three years later or a couple of years later, the, the losses are finally incurred, but the, the, the payments have already been made and the chief executive's already gone. So you'd be looking at a time frame of, what, five years or something like that? Look, there definitely has to be some kind of deferral. Um, there has to be a pot there that, you know, the... the the payments are released as the results are, um, are finally um, produced. If you could get this sort of new guideline in, what sort of companies in the past and, and, and executives might have been hooked by this? Oh, well, look, you've got a few classic cases. Obviously, you've got Leighton's in the present. You had uh, the announcement there a few years ago with Qantas and, uh, uh, you know, Jeff Dixon left um, Qantas uh, then uh, had uh, quite significant uh, costs um, born for the for the for the collusive behaviour that it had engaged, ABC Learning Centres and other ones. You know the various property trusts that uh, my members keep calling me about that uh, they lost a lot of money and the chief executives um, had already left the company. Now, of course, as we heard in the tape piece, the same day the uh, write-downs were announced for at Leighton. On Monday, uh, Kerry Stokes did a deal sweeping retail investors in Western Australian newspapers into buying seven at pretty much the top of the market, one would think. What's your reaction to the institutional proxy advisors who voted for it? Well, look, uh, interesting one comment by one of the institutional proxy advisors was that they, in one sentence, they couldn't uh, gauge the impact um, on shareholders, uh, on current WAN shareholders of, uh, of the transaction. Um, you know, the levels of debt, the, the significant change in the risk profile, the, the, the likely reduction in dividends and, and the obvious uh, reduction in the share price. Um, and they still voted for it? And they still voted for it. it. It surprised us. Obviously there were commercial merits in that transaction but mm. um, it, it, it seemed the, the critical issue seemed to be quite easy, readily gleaned over by the institutional proxy advisors. Now of course Kerry Stokes would be one man who wouldn't, uh, wouldn't really work this, uh, this clawback of, of uh, executive remuneration would it? Well, he's, he, he owns a fair chunk of the company, so, um, um, yeah, yeah. I, I'd say he's, uh, he's there with, uh, with his own equity as well, though. Yeah. So what do you do as, as a shareholders association in a situation like this? Because you were voting against this, weren't you? Well, look, we, were, we put our proxy voting intentions out that um, we saw significant risks, a significant change in the business model. Um, and, look, end of the day, our membership and the small shareholders um, voted in their, in their rejection of their own rights entitlements under the Culls offer. That was to the extent of 14% it was taken up, so 86% did not um, favour the, the transaction. Um, from what I could see, the, the votes against the, the, the transaction were still about 36% against. So that's not, uh, not a shoe-in. Hmm. Clawbacks on, bon on bonuses in, in places like the UK with banks have come in. Are you confident you're going to get something like this through? 
Well, look, you know, end of the day, this is a, a government initiative um, where we, uh, we have responded to the government discussion paper, as have a lot of other parties. So we just have to see how, how it goes. But I definitely think that uh, um, the industry has to look very carefully at how remuneration packages are structured. And finally, you've worked on the dark side, KPMG, Macquarie Bank, Merrill Lynch. I sense a more proactive shareholders association down the track. Oh, look, most definitely. I'm a believer. I, I think um, I, I, I want to see the smaller shareholders looked after. I, I want the smaller shareholders to work with institutional investors as well because I think we all have a common goal um, and I'd like to think that I could uh, make a difference there. Baz Kolesnikov, I'm sure we'll talk again. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.